Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another knife review for you. Today, we have the Benchmade Bailout. This is the new version, the 537GY-1. Thank you very much to Southern Edge Knife Works for providing this to me to review and also uh, to give away to you guys. This is going to be part of our 2500 sub giveaway, which will be out in a couple of days. I was hoping to have it out yesterday, but uh, I'm waiting on one more thing to arrive. It's going to be worth the wait, trust me. So when that arrives, as soon as I get that, I'll record the video. Uh, I am recording this, by the way, on uh, February 23rd of 2020. On February 21st, just two days ago, we did get the news that the founder of Benchmade, uh, Lesta Asis, uh, passed away uh, at the age of 68, which was uh, very, very, very sad news to hear. Um, he was, he, and along with his son, basically, you know, and, and, you know, maybe guys, you know, like the Glessers at Spyderco, basically created the enthusiast American knife market. Uh, Benchmade was founded in 1979. Uh, they originally were making like bala songs and stuff. And uh, they, they eventually evolved into the, the huge company that we know and love today. Everything's all made in the USA and Oregon. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a sad day. Big loss for the community. Uh, I don't care how you feel about Benchmade. Um, they've had some controversies in the last couple of years. Uh, you can't deny, you know, what they've done for the knife community and the innovations they come out with them. Some of the iconic you know, designs that they've come out with. So Godspeed less. Sorry to start out on a downer, but uh, had to get that out of the way somehow. Just trying to figure out uh, how to properly honor him. And I had this, uh, this to review anyway. So now let's talk more about the knife. As I said, this is a new version of the bailout. When the bailout came out last year, it had 3V steel and the grivery handles like you can see on the bug out. It has the catchy name. It was kind of the tactical first responder version of the bug out. Um, but some people didn't like some things about it. They didn't really care for the grivery handles on a knife that is uh, meant to be a bit harder use. And the 3V steel they used to use uh, did not come out so good in some heat treat tests. I, I, I've heard they've, they've ramped that up since then. But initially, some people were upset about the steel. So they switched to these nice aluminum handles, which are much, much stiffer than the old grivery ones were. And now they're using M4 steel. Uh, so completely different change. And Benchmade has been using them for uh, quite a bit, so they know what they're doing with that. This is a Cerakote blade. This is the only color option available. Uh, it is, I'm not a big fan of this color of green. Uh, I am a big fan of the texture of these handles. We'll get to that as we go on. Uh, it does come with a pommel like the old one did, but it also has, adds a glass breaker onto it, which we'll also talk more about. Now, uh, I think the old one is still available. It definitely is lots of places. I don't know if they're continuing to still make it or not. Um, obviously, uh, was not super easy to get a hold of Benchmade the last couple of days, so uh, couldn't really confirm that. But I still see them in stock a whole lot of places, so we'll see about that. This one is two hundred and twelve fifty. The OG was one fifty, so I think they're probably still going to make them both. We will see. The price definitely went up on this one a little bit. But with M four and aluminum handles and all that, eh, I still don't think it's that. I don't. I'm not definitely not going to call it a butterfly tax. Two twelve and it's M four. That's going to happen. M4 is not a not an inexpensive steel at all. Now let's do some size comparisons. Uh, in honor of what I just talked about, we're going to do things in reverse order today. We're going to start out with some size comparisons with other Benchmades. I usually start out with the Spyderco sandwich, but we're going to start with the Benchmade one today. And yes, I did cover my logo for this. I thought that was kind of appropriate. I don't know. Uh, we have the full-size Griptilian. And we're going to do the 940 this time. Is one of their most iconic designs, and also I want to instead of bringing the, out the bug out like I normally would at this time, I want to save that for last because it, it's a. Uh, I want to talk about that a bit more. You can see it's it's pretty much same length as the 940 and the Griptilian, but some of it's pommel. As far as usable handle, you're getting uh, about the same as what you're gonna get on a 940. Now, now we will bring out the usual Spider Co sandwich. Move some stuff around here. Two minute knives laying around. We have your Spider Co. Para 3. I'm going to move these up just a skoosh. And your Paramilitary 2. So, again, I think you're going to see it is quite a long little knife. Long little knife? That didn't make any sense. It's quite a long knife. Just a tiny bit shorter than a PM2. But again, a good chunk of that's pommel. So let's do some specs. You have an overall length of 8.1 inches, blade length of 3.4 inches. You have a blade thickness of just 
0.09 inches, handle thickness also very thin of 0.39 inches, nine inches, and a weight, according to my scales, of 2.68 ounces. So still pretty light. Not as light as the old one was, but, uh, but still pretty light. The blade on this thing, M4 steel, very, very thin behind the edge. Uh, it's It cuts extremely well. It is a Tonto. I kind of understand that for its intended purposes. Uh, I used to not like Tontos, then lately I've been kind of Tonto agnostic, and now I kind of like them. There was a couple knives I've gotten over the last year or so where I had a chance to choose between a Tonto or not a Tonto, and I did choose the Tonto, so or Tanto, however you want to say it. I say Tonto. Tonto, Tanto, Potato, Potato. It's probably Tanto, but... I'm I'm a silly person. Uh, I I really do uh, appreciate the utility of them. I like being able to use this little bit here to open up boxes. I do like that about it. Uh, slight bit of belly on the primary edge, but dead straight. It's still super easy to sharpen for sure. Uh, you have a nice, good, abrupt change on the blade. I do really like that in Tanto Tantos. I do really like that. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier to sharpen. As I said, very thin blade stock, very thin behind the edge. Great blade, super slicey. You do get a bit more of a robust tip than you get in the bug out. It's not, it's still not something I want to go prying to paint cans with. Don't ever do that, but it would not be my first choice to do that if, if I was forced to. Uh, but it's, it's still not too bad. Now, um, as far as the ergonomics go, uh, almost really good. <laughs> um, same same problem I had with the original bailout. It, it fits my hand perfectly fine. You know, using it, actually having it in your hand, it's good to go. You are very locked in with this kind of faux hilt. As I said, I do really like the texture on this. It's very grippy. It's not like your normal aluminum. It's not super slick. It does have definitely, you know, some texture to it, uh, some kind of uh, stickiness to it, I guess you'd almost call it, uh, but it is very comfortable. It feels premium, doesn't feel cheap like some aluminum handles can feels pretty good. Uh, this pommel, though, I can feel it a bit while using it, but that's not bad. Pocket clip's not a hot spot, by the way, for you ask. That's completely fine. I can feel it a bit when I'm using it, but when I can really feel it, and it's the same problem I have with the other one, when you go to close it on the access lock, your natural tendency is to stick it, you know, in the palm of your hand and pull that down, and yeah, that's, that's, that's sharp. I don't like that. Uh, I would rather just not have it because I'm not going to use it as a pommel. I don't care about the lanyard hole. No, that's where they hid the lanyard hole. Super don't care about the glass breaker. I keep a glass breaker in both of my cars. I have a dedicated glass breaker. Um, I wish the glass breaker was removable. On a lot of knives, it's removable. Uh, I'd feel a bit better about it because I just don't want this. It's not super sharp, obviously. It's not going to cut your... But I don't want this little sharp piece sticking out of my pocket for something I'm never going to use. Um, I just, I just don't, I don't like that. And the whole pommel thing, yeah, it's an aluminum pommel. I don't know what you're going to pommel, uh, with a piece of aluminum. Uh, I do know some aftermarket companies like Rob Works is coming out with a backspacer retrofit that gets rid of that. Uh, that would be something if I was going to own this, I, I probably would do. Um, but, and I'm not usually a big knife modder, but that is one thing I would probably mod on this to get rid of that. Uh, I just... I just don't like that. I get it for the purpose that it is. And if you don't want it, you know, they'd probably just rather you went and bought a CF Elite bailout or something like that, or bug out or something like that, you know? Um, but yeah, uh, as far as the carry goes, again, the only problem I have is that pommel. That's the only thing that sticks out. And I don't mind it. This is for the purpose of this. I don't mind that sticking out, but again, it's got that glass breaker on it. And, and I didn't carry this a whole lot because it is for the giveaway and I don't, I don't want to damage it. But I don't like that little thing sticking out. But other than that, you know, it carries, you know, just as good as a bug out does. It's a little heavier, but not enough that you're probably going to notice. Uh, you do feel that kick from that, that little, you know, uh, for, just from the, you know, the shape of the handle, that little kick up the top there. You do feel that just a touch, but it's not like as bad as a flipper tab or something. But other than those two things, it does still carry very well, almost as good as a bug out does. Um, it definitely does feel a lot sturdier. So, and, and this, this, I said these were grippy, but it's not like pants tearing up grippy. It's not like G10. It's not a texture grippiness. It's just like, you know, the finish is, is kind of grippy. Um, as far as the deployment goes, I mean, it's Benchmade. Works great. I don't know. So, you know. So like when you go like this, the pommel doesn't bug you as much, but that's not how I actually do it. Normal practice, I'm going like that, and it's just that little corner. But thumb studs are in a really good place, super easy to use. You can do all the usual bench made flippy dippy stuff with it. Uh, 
I have no issues with the uh, the deployment and all that stuff at all. So what is my conclusion? I think this is better for its intended purposes than the original bailout was, uh, for sure, because it's a much more robust knife. It's got some better steel. And at 212, like I said, I don't think it's a ripoff, uh, especially if you get one in hand. It does feel like 212 bucks when it's in your hand. It honestly really does. Um, but uh, it's, it's, of course, I'm always going to say I wish there were colors. But, you know, that's me. Uh, a lot of people aren't going to care about it. I, I would rather this was just black. Um, but, you know, the OD green is going to fit well for a lot of people who are intended to look at this. So, so that's completely fine. Um, I just really, I just don't like that pommel. I just, I wish it was either completely removable or at least at the very least that glass breaker was removable. Uh, that would make me a whole lot happier. Or if this was just rounded off a bit more, that would be better to me. Um, but I do like the blade. I do like the finish on the blade. And I do like the overall handle shape. So not a bad knife. Not my favorite thing Benchmade's ever made. Uh, but but not, not too bad. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Have a good one.